Hello everybody and welcome to our new series on Reset. Throughout the whole of January we're going to be looking at how we reset our lives and stories to do with that. You know there's lots of things that I think I need to reset in my life. When I look back on what's happened I sometimes see that I have been full of fear at times and anxious. Sometimes I felt okay and then sometimes I felt fearless. But I don't want to take fear or some of the things that maybe I've picked up in this last season into this year. I want God to reset my heart and my mind and my life as I walk into this year. When I was 18, Tim asked me to marry him, which was a really lovely thing. And we went to Argos. It's a great shop, isn't it, Argos? And got my engagement ring which was 80 pounds and it was a sapphire ring, blue stones in it. It was all set beautifully. Now, if I'd lost one of those uh, stones or if one of those stones had been dislodged, I would need to reset it. I would need to reset that ring, put those stones in their proper place. And so the ring looks beautiful as it should do. And that's what it means to be reset, really. It's when things have got out of place in our lives and God puts them back or we allow God to put those things back into place in our lives. It might be that God is out of place in our lives. He's not central. It might be that prayer has lost its place in our life. It might be that reading the Bible has lost its place. This January, we want to put those things back into place and reset. I love the story that we looked at last week of Peter, how Jesus called Peter. He called him on that lakeside and he said, let's go a little bit deeper into the river, into the lake. And off he went and he put out his nets and he caught just hundreds and hundreds of fish. And he said, I want you to be a fisher of men. Come and follow me. And Peter did that. Peter was wild and impetuous and free spirited. And he gave up everything to follow Jesus. And he saw the most amazing miracles. And he saw Jesus raise people from the dead. He saw love like he'd never seen it before. He had conversations like he'd never had before. And then at that last meal before Jesus' death, sat next to Jesus and Jesus said to him do you know what Peter you're going to betray me three times no said Peter I'm not going to betray you three times I couldn't do that I won't do that I will not do that you will before the night's out you'll betray me three times and that is what happened Peter was standing around as Jesus had got arrested and just about to be crucified Peter I was with some people and they said, do you know Jesus? No, I don't know, never heard of him. Do you know Jesus? No, weren't you the man with Jesus? Never, not me. He betrayed him three times. He denied him three times. Can you imagine the shame that Peter would have felt? Can you imagine the complete and utter guilt that he would have felt. How was Peter ever gonna get on his feet again? How was he ever gonna be reset? How was he ever gonna find his place again? He was the man that had been told that he was gonna uh, lead the church, be the rock that was gonna be built on. How was he ever gonna be reset? Jesus does it in the most beautiful way. And we find it in John at the very end. Um, and read it because it's the most amazing story. First of all, this is what Jesus does. He stands at the shore, Peter's in the boat, and he says, put out your net, Peter. And Peter, unexpected, he didn't know it was Jesus, didn't know what was going on. But he puts out his net and he catches hundreds of fish, hundreds, just like that first time he met Jesus. A replay of that story, a replay of the time that he was called by Jesus, a replay of the time that Jesus said, I've got a dream for you, I've got a hope for you. Come with me, Peter, follow me, Peter. He reminds him who he is in that moment. Uh, it's not a conversation, it's an action that reminds him of who he is. And Peter runs and finds Jesus. And they walk together along the beach. And as they're walking together along the beach, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me, Peter? And Peter says, you know I do. 
He says, well, feed my sheep. And then Jesus says again, do you love me, Peter? He says, yes, you know I do, Lord. He says, feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? He says again, the third time. I love you, Jesus. You know I do. Well, feed my lambs. Three times he asks him, do you love me? Three times Peter had betrayed and had denied Jesus. And three times he says, I love you. Jesus is so beautiful in the way that he reinstates Peter and how he reinstates and resets us. It's with gentleness and kindness, but it's totally clear that he's saying, do you know what? That person back there, I believe in him. I love him and I still love him. I love it that Jesus doesn't say um, three times, say sorry, three times, repent. You know, he says, do you love me? Love is so powerful. He doesn't want him to follow him. He doesn't want him to feel good because uh, uh, or do what he's supposed to do out of guilt or out of complete shame. He wants him to do it because he loves him. And he says the same to us. I know you've messed up. I know I've messed up. I don't want you to follow me into this year because you're guilty or shameful or think you're, you owe me something. I want you to do it because you love me. I want you to love other people. I want you to serve other people because you love me. I think that's amazing that Jesus does that. The last thing he does is this. Uh, you know, he says to him, you're going to die really for... Uh, for, for leading the church, Peter. That's what's going to happen. And Peter looks over to John, and John's always been the favourite. John's always been the one that Jesus loved. And Peter looks over to John and says, what about him? And Jesus says, don't worry about him. You know, don't worry about what he's doing. Worry about what I'm calling you to do. Don't compare yourself. How easy it is for us to compare ourselves with other people. I know that I've found that so easy over this last year. I sometimes look at other people online and other leaders and other churches, and I've never really um, struggled with comparison and comparing myself, but suddenly I find myself struggling in that area at times. Jesus says, don't compare yourself. You do what I've asked you to do. What I've asked you to do is amazing. What I've asked you to, the people I've asked you to lead is are brilliant. So you do what I've asked you to do and don't compare yourself. He says the same to each one of us. We're in lockdown right now, our third lockdown. It's so easy to compare ourselves with other people and think that person's doing better or that person seems to be surviving or this is hard. It's so easy to compare ourselves. Don't compare yourself with other people. So as we reset in this year, what does God want to put back in its rightful place? Let's ask him that. And let's not compare ourselves with others. Let's not do things out of guilt and shame, but out of a complete love for Jesus and know that he reminds us who we are. And he says, go and feed my sheep. Go and serve this beautiful, wonderful community around you.